channel. So in this video, I will be talking about systemd dependencies and this is probably the last video of this section. So to accommodate the need for flexibility and fault tolerance, systemd gives you a lot of dependency types. So let's look at few basic dependency types. Uh, so they are number one is requires. So this is a strict type of dependency. So any unit uh, file which has requires and directive and has units under that directive, that means that the current unit file will require those uh, uh, units to be activated. So in, I mean, before trying to activate the current unit, system D would actually activate those unit. And if it fails to activate any of those unit, it will fail the current unit as well. So let's see for an example so let's go to etc or rather not etc let's go to user lib system d systems and let's do a grep so grep hyphen ir and let's look for requires and in the current directory so you can see there are so many uh, units which have a required uh, dependency right so let's just take a look at one of these let's look at the r6 log so system ctl cat r6 so here so this is com commented so if you see this uh, semicolon, this is a comment in this uh, unit file. So, but if you read it, it says requires syslog.socket. So systemd would try to activate this syslog.socket before activating syslog.service. And if it fails to activate syslog.socket, it will also fail the syslog.service. So because this is a strict dependency, right? Uh, next dependency is want so we can see the wants example here itself so this is a not so strict dependency so systemd would try to activate any dependency under the want directory uh, like network.target and network.online network-online.target but uh, the catch here is that systemd wouldn't care if any of these dependency fail it would still activate the current uh, uh, unit right so this is what wants does. Next is a dependency called requisite. So requisite uh, basically in requisite system D uh, wants the any unit under the requisite uh, directive to be activated beforehand. My, I mean, it assumes that that particular uh, unit is already up and running. And in case it is not up and running, the system D would fail the current uh, unit. So let's just do a grep on that. Quizit. And see. So you can see there are a couple of uh, unit files which have requisite under them. So let's just look at this one. So this has a requisite on network manager dot service. So system D wants this particular unit to be running before it tries to activate this particular unit in case this unit is not activated it's not running systemd would fail this unit as well right the last basic type of dependency is conflicts so this is basically a negative dependency so any unit which is listed under the conflict directive uh, systemd actually deactivates it uh, while trying to activate the current uh, unit so let's just do a grab on conflicts and see what all unit have this directive conflicts so you can see there are a lot of uh, units which have the conflict so let's just look at one of these like look at the audit dot service and conflicts so you can see it conflicts with shutdown.target that basically is a shutdown run level. So what would systemd, I mean, 
do if there's a service or a unit in the conflicts directive that it would deactivate this particular unit before activating the current unit so if there are may other uh, unit file mentioned in this conflicts directive all those units would be deactivated uh, before enabling or before activating this audit dot service uh, unit all right uh, there's also uh, a thing called reverse uh, uh, dependency so sometimes you would see things like wanted by and required by so these are reverse uh, dependency management so suppose for example if you have a unit file a which wants a unit file b so either you can define that dependency by wants uh, directive in the unit file of a or you can do that by defining a wanted by directive in the unit file of b but the wanted by and the required by directive go under the install section of that particular unit right so this was just i wanted to tell you so i can show you so let's just do a grab and see if there's a required by required by you can see there's one all right so i don't know what vga auth service is but let's do this let's do a cat on this and this has a required by uh, directive in the install section and this is required by basically this service right so instead of defining uh, a dependency in this we have defined the dependency in so this is like the service b so service b is required by vm tools dot as the service whatever it is right so i hope you get what i'm trying to say uh, when i'm saying that this is reverse dependency so there's a system ctl basically gives you a way to check the type of dependency a unit file a unit has so there's a command actually so that command goes like system ctl show give an hyphen p and if you do a double tap or rather there are too many results so we'll not do a double tap instead we'll do suppose i want to see wants uh, type of dependency in httpd dot service so i just wanted to i want to see what all uh, units are in the wants uh, uh, directive under the httpd dot service so you can see that httpd.service wants systems system.slice so likewise you can check if there's any requires so you can see that it requires dot mount and basic dot target so this is the way basically you can check uh, what uh, dependency type is there in a particular unit right all right the next thing comes is the ordering so if you remember in the last video when we were configuring httpd dot service there came a directive called after right so there are basically two uh, uh, directive that defines the order after and before so any unit file that has an after directive would basically start after the listed service the listed unit file units and any uh, you know, basically unit has a before directive would start uh, before the listed unit files so for an example let's just look at system ctl cat httpd dot service so this has an after directive so this unit would be activated only after network dot target remote fs dot target and nss lookup dot target have been activated not before that instead i mean if we had a before clause over here before directive over here then this uh, this unit would have been activated before these given units right so this is how you manage the ordering in system d now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a very basic unit file and show you how dependencies work right so what i'm going to do is in my, i'll not create it in the user lib because this is the system manage uh, uh, unit files i'll basically go to etc system 
the system which has the user managed uh, system unit files all right so here i'm going to create a file called first dot target like very basic and inside this i would say unit let's give it a description uh, first target file and let's define say first we are going to define a strict dependency so requires and let's say second dot target and that's it that's that's what we are going to do let's just save this and now what we are going to do is system ctl start first dot target so you can see fail to start first dot target because there's a unit which is not found that is the second dot to the target right so what if we create second dot target right and in this unit and get it a description one second target now let's try again so you can see this time the first dot target got started now let's do a system ctl status on a second dot target because we have we know that first dot target has started but since there was a require uh, uh, section requires section it was a strict dependency so this should also be running you can see system ctl has basically started second dot target when we didn't explicit explicitly started it right so this is how basically the dependencies work so yeah so probably you would want and go around and play with other dependency type which we have like wants required by wanted by conflict so it will be basically fun if you just try to do that right so yeah this is it for this video guys we have covered everything in system d for now if you feel that i haven't covered anything please feel free to comment in the section and i would try to do a video on that or would try to explain you i mean over the email or any way you like right so yeah thank so this is it for this video please do subscribe to the channel before going and yeah thank you for watching guys